ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೇಲ್ ಬರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇಮೇಲ್ ಕಳಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ನಾನು ನಾನು ಅದು 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 ಕಾಯ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ನನ್ನ ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಬಸ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಯ್ತಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡಿ ಸರ್ ಬೀನ್ ವೈ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರಿ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಚಂದ್ರ yes we got it it is being shared sir he is having a problem once it's open then it will go for the unmute so it will he cannot be able to unmute that thing so that's what he has been trying since from the last half an hour very clear ha sir ee unmute madakagutha nodi sir naaki kele maagi kele mon nimmal mani ka ಫೈನಲಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಬಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಅನ್ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ನೋ ನೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಶೋ Uh-huh. please put it back on the slide show uh-huh. and you can unmute yourself and can start the proceedings uh-huh. yes sir yes sir uh-huh. it's good you can you can move with the cursor you can be able to move the slides you can just check sir with the cursor uh-huh. one of host can unmute him if possible you can try no they are also unable to unmute him Oh uh, yeah sir it's moving it's moving uh, finally we got shared so you can you can go back you can go back to the first slide you can get back to the first slide 
but only thing is that we are unable to hear you can unmute yourself somehow uh, ganesh murthy and team sir 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 can you able to solve the problem <laughs> sir from our end it's not possible to unmute sir sir but we can request only sir just send the request formal request i have been also sending to him but uh, it's unable but i don't know it's been inter interlinked i believe in his software sir otherwise we can make a call uh, the phone call sir, phone I call know, sorry, sir, yeah yeah, yeah. It. sir it's unmuted it's unmuted now you can speak mataadi sir mat oh then he is we lost again manu do you mind sharing the screen why don't you get it done which one asking to share the ppt you can share the screen no no you have not yet received the ppt of him ah uh, banu or nim email bandidya illa sir illa it's open so open hmm. another laptop i am to receive recording in progress ಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ sir in case if it is not possible can you go ahead with the only uh, with the presentation sir mm -hmm. hello ha ah, one minute one minute okay sir ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದೇನು ಬಾಳ ಹೋಗ್ತಿರಲ್ಲಪ್ಪ ಅದ್ ಮುಗುತ್ತೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಮುಗಿಟ್ಟು ಅಷ್ಟೊತ್ತಿಗೆ ನಿಂಗ್ ರಸ್ ಗೌಡ್ರ ಹಾಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡಕ್ ಆಗತ್ತಾ ವಿತ್ಔಟ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಅದು 
ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಅನ್ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ವಿನಯ್ ಶೇರ್ ದ ಸ್ಲೈಸ್ ಭಾನು ಏನೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆದಾಗಮೇಲೆ ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ಅನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲೇನೋ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ವೇರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇದೆ ಅದು ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೌ ನೋಡಿ ಈಗ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನೋಡಿ ಕೊಡ್ರಿ ಬಟ್ ಅದು ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಅವ್ರು ಅನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ ದ ಜೂಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೈ ದಟ್ ನೋ ನೋ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೆಂಡ್ ದ ಫೈಲ್ देयर ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪಾಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ share the file in the message box chat box chat box we can do it ah uh, there is an icon if you click on that you can share this slide maybe that slide can be downloaded here and shared la do we support aagta illa the system is not supporting that particular thing ಏನೇ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆಗುದಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ನಿಮ್ದು ಬರ್ತಾನೆ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಕು ನಾಟ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ ದಿ ಮೇಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಐತೆ ಮೀನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಯೋಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಪೀಪಲ್ so tomorrow at uh, 3:30 we will be having the valedictory so professor murtunjaya the former director of nip will be our chief guest he has given the consent for presiding that particular thing and uh, uh, for uh, as being chief guest and uh, dr rajan prasad sir our beloved and honorable vice chancellor will be the presidential uh, candidate and uh, our dean will be there so i request all the hods and uh, all the faculty members to inform and instruct the pg students to assemble the north block auditorium at 315 exactly tomorrow so that we will start the proceedings by 330 in the afternoon so this is for the information of everyone so we will try to have a very as crisp as possible the valedictory so only the two speakers will be there the round up of the science week will be presented by our uh, dean uh, dr h c prakash sir and uh, after that uh, we will have the chief guest speech and then the presidential remarks and before going to the uh, find up of voting about our thanks uh, we will have the distribution of the best posters and uh, best uh, oral presentation awards so that could be the itinerary of total uh, program that which will be having tomorrow at uh, 330 onwards at north block auditorium you know bartta ide bartta but our voice hogutte adu mukya oh simultaneously 
ಒಂದ್ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಒಂದ್ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ವೇರ್ ಅದು ಕೆಲವು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೌದೌದೌದು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕ ನೋಡಿ ಮಾತಾಡೋದ್ರೆ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನೋಡೋಣ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡೋದಂತೆ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಜನರಲ್ ತಮ್ಮ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ತಮ್ಮ ಇದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ Uh, having some kind of a technical itch at this particular point. So this is uh, inclu- a very uh, unpleasant time that uh, we are having a difficult thing. So now I, what I can request is that I request our uh, uh, beloved Dean PGS, Dr. H.C. Prakasha, to have a brief introduction of our today's speaker, Dr. Krishna Gadasar, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. that uh, we will proceed with uh, some kind of uh, an informal uh, ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ uh so the all the professors uh, professor and dates uh, teachers students and friends and uh, some of my classmates also here of course uh, welcome you all to this uh, program of course uh, krishna gowda uh, is our alumni from the university of agriculture sciences bangalore in fact uh, he was our classmate he was classmate to uh, me also he was classmate to dr anil kumar why dr vasudevan uh, uh, dean uh, agri mandya arni kumar uh, uh, administrative officer bc mallesh ss prakash dean agri um, uh, mandya ct subrayappa and mallikarjun everybody here is a well known figure in the this one of course uh, the uh, the krishna gowda is uh, from uh, asan district he is from the village uh, ಹಿರೇಹಳ್ಳಿ ತಾಲೂಕು ಅರ್ಕುಲ್ಗೋಡು ದಿ ಫಾದರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿರೇಗೌಡ ಅಂಡ್ ಮದರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಣ್ವಮ್ಮ ಈ ಡನ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಅಟ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಟು ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಅಟ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟಿ ಎ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಟ್ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಇಸ್ ಎ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸಾಸ್ ಎಲ್ತ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಟೈಲರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸಾಸ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಎ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಟು ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ at uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, uh, Tennessee, USA. And from 2000 to 2000, he served as a senior scientist in In Vitro Gen Corporation Medicine, Winkinson, USA. Now at present from 2008 onwards, he is a manager, at, uh, in, uh, manager for uh, enzyme production, 
at uh, Lucy Jung, that is LGC Corporation Medicine Wing Concern USC. So, with this uh, brief introduction, uh, I welcome our uh, alumni, our beloved friend, uh, my classmate, uh, Dr. Krishna Goda, uh, to deliver a guest lecture on the topic enzyme production and its use in biotechnology. Right, sir. Krishna Gowda, sir, welcome to our university, sir. On the online, you can uh, uh, deliver your lecture now. Of course, uh, since slides are not sharing, orally we can discuss, no problem. A discussion is also very, very important. Okay, okay. please uh, go, ahead, go ahead, sir. Hello. Dr. Pano, there seems to be some problem. Would you kindly help us to fix the problem? Sir, I think we have lost him also. He's there, but... Uh, no, no, he's not there also. Video is sir, sorry, is there, sir, but uh, he's turned off his video, sir, actually. Sir, Krishna Gauta, sir. Ah, Bandra, Krishna Gauda has come. Gaudre, are you able to hear us? He's talking, but not uh, busy hearing. Gaudre, can you stand here? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sorry for the question. Also, I'm very sorry for what happened. Prakashan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you start it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, whatever happened. I don't know. Somehow, you know, when I open the screen, uh, share screen, it's going, uh, you know, uh, unmute. Ah, okay, unmute. So let us discuss. So, you know, uh, so, you know, I did my, you know, you have already told, uh, uh, I did my PhD in microbiology with uh, PV Rai. So after that, I joined IAC for almost uh, three, four years. I was working on rotavirus. I was, uh, you know, work, uh, I was working on uh, rotavirus um, structure and function. We are trying to understand the structure and function of that rotavirus, and our uh, aim was to develop uh, you know, rotavirus vaccine. So in uh, there, I was working on you know all the. Um, I was trying to express all the rotaviruses. Uh, protein. Uh, then after that, you know, uh, I moved to US in 94. 
I moved to Texas where I started working on um, some signal recognition for uh, signal recognition particle proteins. Again, it is again understanding the structure and function of signal recognition particle. So um, I was there almost uh, four or five years. Uh, they again there also working on you know recombinant protein production and uh, you know uh, and then, then the characterization. So I uh, then I moved to Saint Jude for a short time, uh, uh, maybe one and a half year, where I was working on uh, some uh, DNA repair enzyme. Uh, again, I was uh, trying to express that protein in mammalian cells. So, but I was there for a short time. After in 2000, I moved to Madison, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, about the biotech company. I started working on um, like all the recombinant uh, proteins. You know, we use those in uh, uh, all the research use as well as uh, um, uh, diagnostic, and some are used in clinical use. So, what we do you know, in a recombinant protein production is very important. You know, there are uh, you know. Um, it has a lot of use in, uh, in microbiology and also um, uh, uh, diagnostic use and clinical use. So uh, our company mainly focuses on uh, making these uh, uh, proteins um, uh, and uh, you know ex expressing them in E. coli and purifying them, then characterization. So um, expression in a different host like in you know, E. coli. Uh, uh, prokaryotic system and also eukaryotic system like uh, you know uh, mammalian cells so uh, prokaryotic system we express them in e coli then uh, you know uh, we try to make them in large scale then uh, we try to purify cells uh, proteins from the cells so we use different uh, techniques uh, like you know chromatographic techniques and uh, uh, to purify this protein so these proteins, you know, sometimes they're tagged, sometimes they're untagged, and most of our proteins are untagged. See, these tagged proteins, you know, it is not for any kind of, you know, function. Like, you know, it can uh, quickly purify these um, uh, uh, tagged proteins. So, you know, they're, they're not uh, for any diagnostic use. So because uh, they contain a lot of... Uh, uh, other kind of like you know, host cell contaminants like uh, proteins, you know, DNA, uh, nucleases. So all those, you know, it is, uh, you know, we have to remove all these contaminants, host cell contaminants, to get a pure protein. Because uh, you know, it is all these host cell contaminants they interfere with uh, the activity of the protein. So our job is to you know purify this protein purify all these contaminants, host cell uh, contaminants, and get the pure protein. So then this pure protein, you know, we use it for you know, any, um, you know, like, you know, research use, uh, and also diagnostic, you know, like PCR, RT-PCR, and uh, we also use for clinical uh, uh, purpose. So, you know, these proteins, this is, I wanted to show you some slides, you know, how we make these proteins. Now, how we remove these uh, contaminants, uh, all those things. You know, um, it is uh, good to have the slides to you know show the show you people. So we make all these proteins for uh, you know um, research use, diagnostic use. Now we make a lot of uh, um, kits for uh, like you know diagnosis of uh, different diseases. Uh, example: last time, uh, last uh, pandem during pandemic time, we made a COVID test kit. So using all our enzymes. So like that, you know, we make a lot of uh, um, uh, kits, and also enzymes and reagents needed for the uh, uh, diagnostic purpose. So uh, that's the um, uh, uh, job we are doing uh, currently uh, in my uh, place. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I can answer. So. So these are common why we do common production when there is no <clears throat> like you know when there is the low expression and uh, uh, you know uh, you cannot get it from natural uh, sources then we go for recombinant protein production so you put your gene 
in whatever the expression vector, then try to express in uh, whatever E. coli or uh, mammalian cells or yeast cells, whatever, express them. Then you know, then you lyse the cells. Once you have the after your expression, you take the cells. Then you have to purify that uh, protein, uh, the target protein from your cells. Cells contain all the E. cells or whatever host cells. So you have to remove all these host cells, purify all these uh, host cell proteins and also the nucleic acids and also nucleases like RNAs, DNAs. You now your protein should be free of all these host cell contaminants. The host cell contaminants are like you know, proteins and uh, uh, DNA, RNA, DNAs, RNAs, endotoxin. So you know if you want to use uh, these proteins in any therapeutic use or you know any uh, clinical use, so you have your protein should be clean, you know, free of all these contaminants. So that's what we do at a uh, you know, company. You know we express this protein, then uh, purify this protein. Then we do all this uh, characterization, clean all this uh, contaminant. Then finally, you know, put this in some whatever the storage enzyme storage buffer. Then we sell it to the um, pharmaceutical companies, diagnostic companies. So, so that's what uh, we are doing at uh, Lucision. So, so if you have any questions, so you know, uh, because this are all most of our genes, you know, the human genomes. We try to express uh, um, uh, our protein um, uh, in uh, uh, E. coli and some of them in uh, uh, mammalian cells. Oh, I cannot hear you. Okay, uh, one second. Uh, anybody from microbiology or biotechnology background? Any Hello. Hello. Sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, good morning, sir. Yeah, yeah. Tell. Yeah. Sir, when this? when we try to express. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. When yeah. we have to express this some of the recombinant uh, proteins in the E. coli, there is a every chance of yeah. getting in, uh, inclusion body, sir. Uh, what is the uh, yeah. what we can do to overcome that inclusion body? Hello, sir. Inclusion bodies, you know, like uh, uh, you have to try different, uh, you know, expression conditions. Uh, you know, remember, try to go okay, low temperature. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, try to express okay. different cells, uh, different uh, host. Like you know, uh, okay. denature, renature the protein. That is the final step. But you know, before that, try to you know make it soluble. Uh, try to. Optimize your expression conditions. So if you are expressing 37 degree, go to lower temperature. And also, uh, your uh, uh, IPTZ, whatever induction uh, chemical, you know, reduce that. Um, uh, if you are using a 0.5 millimolar or one molar, uh, sorry, one millimolar, go uh, go to 0.5 millimolar. You can reduce the IPTZ in uh, inducer. Okay, or different temperature. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, most of the it's difficult to express this. Um, some of the you know uh, large proteins, Nikolai. That's why people go for you know different expression hosts like you know mammalian expression or you know, insect cell expression. All this you know people go for different expression system. So yeah, E. coli there is a chance that you know you can it can go uh, inclusion bodies, but you know you have to optimize your expression conditions. You know we can denature renature protein, but uh, that is the final step. So you know before that you know try to optimize your uh, expression conditions. Like your temperature, then your uh, induction media, all those things. Okay. Yeah, I have a small. I hear. I... Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I I have a small uh, clarification. Just uh, it's not a question, just a clarification. Can I? Please go ahead, sir. Please go no. ahead. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. So now we talk a lot about uh, protein expression system in vitro. And yeah. uh, 
Now, we, as you rightly beautifully mentioned, we have yeast system, bacterial system, and mammalian system. What are yeah, the modern yeah. approach? What are the modern approaches uh, you industry people are looking at with respect to efficient protein expression and purification? Do you think about the plant system as well for a high level of expression and uh, eco friendly? Definitely. So. so, what is the current yeah. status? So, Would you please let us know on that? Yeah, you know, people are trying to express in plant system also because it's uh, cheaper, faster. But problem is glycosylation. Glycosylation is a big problem because you, uh, you don't get uh, whatever the glycosylation, you get it in uh, human cells uh, when you express in plant cells. That is a major thing. So, and also, you know, the quality system, it is not well established in uh, plant system yet. Uh, it's not there yet. So that's why people are going for mammalian expression like, you know, uh, CHO cells. So you know, it is very well characterized and, you know, uh, people are trying to get good yield from that. So, you know, people are trying human cells, uh, plant cells, you know, still we are not there yet. Glycosylation is a big problem, you know, when you try to express human proteins in plants, you don't get same glycosylation, you know, whatever you get in human cells. But uh, in... Um, uh, mammalian cells, like you know, CHO cells, you know, you get uh, all the whatever the glycosylation you needed. Yeah, glycosylation is a major thing, you know, um, to get a you know, native state protein. Uh, in case of mammalian system, what you just now mentioned, you have yeah. probably yeah. transient as well as stable expression, which is uh, uh, kind of uh, attract you now. It's a transient expression system, which is, I think, uh, uh, people. Stable for, uh, you know, good, uh, like, in you know, a good deal, stable expression. Transient studies, you know, it is, uh, like, you know, uh, maybe small-scale studies, they go for a small scale. For a large scale, I think, uh, stable expression. Okay, okay. So, you, what about the e-system? Do you think that's a, a, a problematic system? Also to okay, but, you know, yeah, yeah. People are uh, actually uh, people have expressed uh, uh, proteins in yeast system also, but problem is again glycosylation. You don't get same glycosylation as you get in uh, mammalian cells. Okay, so and uh, yeast system it is slow, slow growth, and it, it takes long time to you know uh, produce any uh, any of your target protein. So that's a major drawback with uh, yeast system. <coughs> Okay, great. So you mentioned that you have this COVID, uh, you know, uh, test kit. Yeah. So uh, do you have any uh, thing to share a little bit more on that for our uh, general uh, yeah. knowledge? Uh, we made a COVID kit. We have our own enzyme. So it is uh, basically um, um, two enzyme. Okay, one is you know reverse transportase to make RNA, then uh, another uh, PCR enzyme. So we have, we have two enzymes, and also all the reagents like you know buffer, NTPs, all those things. You know we supply together. We sell it as a master mix. So that we you know we detect uh, you know whatever the current uh, COVID uh, strains. Uh, we make those kits and uh, send it to um, CDC, Center for Disease Control. So there, they, you know, they they have distributed our kits. So you know, we make our own kits. Uh, we sell it to CDC. There, you know, they they distribute to different uh, places from there. Okay, so this is basically PCR based kit, not uh, enzyme based yeah. kit. RT PCR. Okay, so basically yeah. you have a cocktail and uh, uh, yeah. primers, right? We have primers and everything, you know, like in you know, our controls, uh, your enzymes and buffers, everything. So, I mean, yeah, that is a master mix. <clears throat> yeah. So then, you know, simply add your target in that and I'll be fine. That's it. It's not a rapid test, it takes time. No, 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 this is not rapid. This is rt -PCM. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Welcome. Thank you. Thank so you. So if you have any further excuse me. Hello? Any any others? Any others? Any please? others? Good, right? Yeah. Uh, general question from my side. You yeah, tell your, me. Uh, degree, you done your degree here on agriculture. Yeah. But shifted to um, like uh, towards medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Sir. What made you to shift towards? Uh, Medical field. Uh, you know, after my PhD, uh, I went to IAC, right? There I started working on um, like, you know, rotaviruses and uh, vaccine development. It's all molecular biology. So, you know, uh, I got a couple of good publications there. Then, uh, you know, <laughs> after that, you know, I just... Uh, and there were those days, you know, it was difficult to get a job in India, you know, uh, to, in the university or whatever. Then I applied a couple of places in the U.S. Then I came to U.S. You know, I started working on uh, all the, like, you know, molecular biology only from there. So that's how, you know, I shifted to, you know, um, medical field. So, yeah, I never had a chance to go back to agriculture field. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Welcome. I request. So if, you, if, you any, if you have any questions regarding you know, like, you know, all this uh, enzyme production, whatever, you're welcome to ask any questions. If anybody is here, anybody yeah, wants yeah, yeah. to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The if people are there, they're welcome to ask. Biochemistry, they sir, can ask the question. Yeah, I am Veena Anil, sir. Yeah, Thank, you. Veena Anil. Thank you for your talk. Thank you for uh, your talk. Uh, so I would like to know whether you are using, to know whether you're like using yes, immobilized yes, technology. And how many times can you reuse the enzymes uh, with this technology? What is this? What your question? I didn't get it. Immobilization of enzymes, sir. Do you all use that in your uh, industry? Immobilization. Uh, enzymes, no, we don't use that. Okay. Okay, sir. So and, uh, we you know we make enzymes and use it for any uh, molecular biology work, uh, like you know PCR, RT PCR. Then uh, we have a couple of DNA repair enzymes and DNA modifying enzymes. So we do only molecular biology work. And also, you know, we supply enzymes to, um, like, you know, uh, uh, research use and uh, diagnostic use and clinical use. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you have any questions, so all those things, you're welcome to ask. You know, we make proteins, we put it in a gene, you know, expression vector, then you put it in a expression host, then you express the protein, we make more and more of that protein, then we, you know, purify that protein, uh, you know, uh, using different chromatography techniques. We use affinity chromatography, then different uh, ionization chromatography, chromatography, if there is no tag, and most of our proteins, uh, they are all untagged, and it is very challenging to purify because there are thousands of proteins, but you have to bring it to one protein finally, your target protein. You have to get rid of all the proteins and you have to remove all your wholesale contaminants. That's a big challenge in our application. Uh, so why don't you use a tank first? It come easy. Excuse, Excuse me? Use the tags for your purification of your proteins. Madam, you are totally right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah. I can answer that question. See, yes, sir, tags, yes, you know, uh, <laughs> this your activity finally. Okay, so you cannot have tags. Okay, first of all, uh, you know, and also tags. Once you, if you want to check the, you know, like you know, 
activity of this protein whatever so you have to remove your tag then for that you have to use another enzyme uh, to remove the tag to clean the tag that's why you don't, you don't use tags. again you have all these contaminants and then again you have to all this like you know, your sorry i cannot hear you Lot oh, can you hear me? Lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because uh, finally it interferes with your uh, activity. That's why we avoid. See, these tags, you know, just to, you know, just clone your gene and, you know, uh, test, you know, your functionality of the protein, that is fine. But, you know, when you want to use it in, like, you know, all these uh, diagnostic purpose, we don't want to have tags because they can interfere with your active, final activity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, any more questions? I can answer. Other HODs, professors. Now it is students. Now students can ask the question now. Uh, students, please. Okay, sir. If others are not, if other... can, I, can I have another question, please? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the query here is, uh, well, we have uh, mm, uh, enzymes here. Not Your interest is not a protein. Basically, you have to have an active enzyme or active protein which can convert a substrate to a product or carry out some reaction. So under those situations, uh, you said uh, if you want to have a pure protein, uh, you don't want to use tag. Then when you yeah. process the yeah. when you process the you know purification steps, you lose the activity of the enzyme. So with the tag affinity tag or whatever it is, probably your purification process becomes simpler. Uh, could you please comment on that? No, who who said that you know you want to lose the activity when you purify the protein? It's not true. In the long run of purification. Uh, you may lose Long that. No, lose uh, any activity because you know this uh, purification we do all uh, you know in four degree and uh, any we don't use any harsh uh, conditions to purify these proteins. So you know there is no chance that you know protein will lose activity. Okay, but if you use tag, it becomes relatively easy. That is the thinking of some. Just to you know, that is just to check your uh, functionality of okay whether you have gene or not. You know, but uh, when you have a tag, see you have to see you have to remove the tag after your purification. Okay. Yeah. That's another step. Okay. That to remove the tag. You have to insert some proteases in between your gene and the tag. Okay, then you have to use another protease to cleave that. See, finally, when you cleave or when you take out your pure protein, you you may have chance of all your uh, tag contamination or maybe you may have your protease contamination. So you have to further purify this. So you don't want to go through all these things. That's we can easily purify non-tag proteins. There is a better technology now to purify you no know, non-tag like you know people you know, many of the uh, diagnostic people they don't like tax. So okay. they don't want tax, but uh, it, it won't do any activity. That is uh, uh, we have been doing this for many years. So we have never seen any <clears throat> protein losing activity. Okay, so do you have any idea for our students? What are the modern approaches which you use for purification now to have the quality protein? Yes, purification, I'll tell you what we do exactly. So you see, once you, uh, after your expression, we have your cell paste, okay? We lyse the cells. <clears throat> you have to lyse, you, know, you are open your cells, right? So you have to lyse the cells by using you know any kind of um, sonicators or any microfluidizer so you know that is ultrasonic waves you know it disrupt the cell membrane and break open your cells and your protein will come out so once you lyse the cells so we clarify the cells 
we clarify for the cell just to get rid of uh, all the uh, uh, insoluble protein or some junk okay so once you have the protein in your supernatant so for that you know what we do we um, do the several like you know initially we try to remove uh, your uh, dna rna all those things for this for that we add pi pi removes all your uh, host cell dna okay initially so once you add the pi then you, you know, uh, spin again take the supernatant the supernatant contains your enzyme so that one you put it on columns so the columns what columns you want to use so we use different techniques like ion exchange affinity you know there's so many hydrophobic uh, columns so we use different techniques in uh, chromatography so we first you know use ion action column there are so many columns you know rsv sulfuros q sulfuros you know we try to screen columns first which are the what are the best columns we need to get, get rid of all these host cell protein or host cell contaminants so we try to use different um, resins like ion action affinity then size exclusion all these columns we one column is not enough to purify and stack proteins so we need many columns so at least four or five columns you need to get a pure protein so there are thousands of protein oh, no, sorry i could not show you any gel so there are thousands of protein but you have to bring to the single protein so uh, how do you remove all these thousand protein by chromatography okay so we remove uh, in uh, if you're using different uh, resins so then once you have the pure protein it is free of all the host cell protein free of all your uh, nucleases in you know, rnas dnas and endotoxins so we do many tests you know while uh, in process or you know after uh, after purifying we test our uh, we thoroughly check our, our protein uh, undergo a lot of uh, tests like you know dna uh, dna contamination test then rna contamination test then rna dna test we do so many tests Make sure everything it passes. So after that only everything if everything passes, then it is we uh, ready to sell this product to the customer. It it has several steps, you know. Uh, like it is not easy. It is purify a protein it takes months or two months if we continue to work. Uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, uh, thank sorry. you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, come on. Uh, sir, uh, come on. Uh, then uh, the. We are unable to hear. Unable to hear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the pure purification protocols you're using is similar to uh, native protein purification protocols, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
So what I just wanted to say is, sir, without tax, then you all are following protocols used for native proteins, which is very cumbersome. But uh, hopefully, once you, uh, you know, once you standardize the protocol, it becomes easy. The same thing, you know, um, once standardized, that would be, uh, you know, it's uh, easy to follow after that. But the standardization will take time, isn't it, sir? Yeah, you know, see, any protein, it takes a while to develop a method. So we cannot directly go and purify the protein. See, we do small scale purification, you know, uh, we have a method starting from rice all the way to the different chromatography. So we develop method. Hmm. Once we know what column we need to use, then we write a protocol. Then we write a protocol and follow the protocol. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You got it? Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, sir. So, if there are no any other queries, so I thank anybody, anybody who is into any, please? Anyone? Yes, sir. No, we are unable to hear you. Can you, can you please? You can post your question in the chat box also, so that I can be able to repeat that to uh, Dr. Krishna Yoda, sir. So there is a there is a query, sir, from the biotechnology students. Uh, they are uh, quite questioning that is there any possibility that the biotechnology student can pursue any kind of higher studies or job opportunities? So that's so what, what uh, they are <laughs> so What is the question? What is the question? It is a direct message. Is so direct is message. Job opportunities for MSc biotechnology students of GKVK. <laughs> so it is open. So uh, the world is open. The world is open. <laughs> uh, no, you have to, you know, you have to uh, apply for a job directly. I doubt it. Uh, it is difficult to get job from uh, you know, MSc graduates. Uh, best thing I advise, you know, come for uh, MS here. <laughs> you can apply for MS and do MS, and you can easily finish within two years. Then you can get a job. Getting job uh, from India, I think it is uh, tough. Okay. He can apply for MS. So they have to pursue the MS first, then then later on they have to uh, yeah, search yeah. for the job over there. Or for post doctor. You know, after your PhD, yes. it's easy if you want to come uh, as a visiting scientist, uh, as a post doctoral scientist, it's easy. But with MS, it is uh, your MS in India. It is difficult to get a job here. So I recommend you know we can come for MS here, um, apply for MS. You have to take some exams like a TOEFL, GRE, whatever. So then after that, you know, I can, you can apply for some universities, and you, know, you can finish within two years your MS. It's easy; it's not difficult. So once you do your MS here, I think you can easily get a job here. So thank you, sir. So with this. Uh, I profusely thank uh, Dr. Krishna Gauda, sir, even with the technical itch. So, we should be able so to make some able presentations. Make we could be able to interact with you. And today we are celebrating Krishna Janmashtami over here. I think we have the right person in the name of Krishna Gauda. So uh, I thank uh, on behalf of the university and on behalf of the directorate and personal behalf. Well, thank you very much, sir, for participating and providing your valuable thoughts and, your valuable thoughts and, so, and uh, answering many of the queries from our faculty and also from our uh, students. So I profusely thank once again, sir. I hope that once when you are there, I hope that once when you are there, Bangalore you will be made. Bangalore you will make make a time for us to visit. So with this, uh, you know, I want to give a talk. <laughs> I want to give this talk in uh, GKVK next time when I come. Definitely, so I'm sorry, sir. and somehow it is uh, going mute.
it's it's it, it there will be a software error will be there sir always we have to cope up with that so sometimes it do happen and we will not be able to come out with that so more we depend on the technology these things will happen definitely and we have to cope up with that so with this thank you very much sir so once again uh, i i request all of you to join for the respective sessions so with this we conclude this uh, online session of the morning of third day then uh, we'll meet once again tomorrow at the same time okay thank you very much sir thank you thank you babu thank you prakash for giving me the opportunity to talk here today i am sorry i could not present my slides <laughs> uh but i am happy to answer any questions if say, anybody has any questions okay and, and one more last announcement if you have any kind of questions you please free enough to mail to us so please please we, we will be able to send back to the krishna gowda sir and get the reply and we will be able to pass it so thank you very much sir thank you very much okay. thank you thank you prakash Hello Kelsa idea godre ha kelsa idea jike jike ada to india baru plan idea ah i may come this uh, year sometime i don't know when so bandre ondu nammeli illo ondu oral presentation kodpodi Microbiology sure. and biochemistry. Yeah. I have to give because of yeah, this yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll definitely give a talk there. So yeah, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions if some anybody has any questions. Yeah, yeah. Anybody is still there to ask? Yeah, ask the question. Okay. Hello, Malaysh. Ah, uh, the Malaysh also there. There. Ah, uh, Prakash hello. also there. Prakash, Malaysh. Namaskar. <laughs> And C T Supriya also there. 